guys, it's Roa here from Covers coming at you with Davis Sanchez. It is the Chez and Row Show. We're talking week 18 in the CFL. Four games on the slate this week. Uh, lots of uh, interesting lines here and honestly, uh, not many early leans for myself. Uh, Going to start off with the early game this week. We've got the Rough Riders into Hamilton to play against the Ty Cats. Uh, Ty Cats open as slim favorites, minus 1.5. Uh, seen them at minus two or minus 2.5 at most books right now. Uh, Ticats should be getting some guys back from the injury list. Uh, we're seeing uh, some important players, including Simone Lawrence, uh, back in the lineup. So uh, hopefully uh, those guys will give them a boost. Uh, right now, my this is probably the only thing where I have really an early lean uh, at this point in the week. I do like the riders with the points here. I like them on the money line as well. I frankly haven't seen enough from the Ty Cats to really trust them as a favorite, even at home. Uh, you know, there's a reason this is team is just four and ten this season. Uh, what are you thinking about this one, Chez? Yeah, don't hate that. I don't, I don't have a play here. I don't hate that. You know, I always say this. Look at the riders, though. If you look at there's there's three things. There's once the season starts, there's really three things that you can't fix on a CFL roster just because. Um, you can't find you can't find Canadians, you can't find offensive linemen, and you can't find quarterbacks. And two of those three, uh, the Riders are really bad. And that's that's their offensive line and their quarterback. And and they've been and, and the reason they've been so bad, they they've been exposed. Remember, they were four and one to start the season. Yeah, yeah. Um, they've been exposed because you and the reason you can't find those is because all the best offensive linemen are in the NFL, and uh, you know receivers, defensive backs, things are players of that nature. There's, there's more of those floating around. You know, you can find a guy that can cover. You can find a guy that can run routes. You can't find a guy that's 6'7", 330 and has decent feet, you know. And then and that's good. the same thing with same thing with the quarterback. Like, there's not that many guys that understand the Canadian game. And, and they're, the combination of the two has really set this team back. And and, and uh, they'll have to make a huge readjust in the, in the offseason. But that that's the big thing for me, bro. This team's been exposed at those two positions. And there's, there's just no way to fix it. Fair enough. All right, next game, we've got a couple of games on Saturday. Uh, first one, really short line, uh, Argonauts hosting the Lions. Argos right now are one-point favorites. Uh, an interesting one for myself here. Uh, this should be an intriguing one because both these teams are heading to the playoffs, uh, but it matters to be seen exactly who's going to be playing against whom. Uh, you know, I, I don't have a really a lean either spot in this one. Uh, if anything, I might be going towards the under. Not really sure, though. What are you thinking about this one? Yeah, the one thing I watch for is is BC traveling across the country. That's the that's the longest trip, or you know, the second longest trip for them. And it's never easy either Toronto to BC or BC to Toronto with the time change and, and the travel. And then, of course, I mean, even these guys in BC wanting to get out and, and mess around in Toronto. It's always it's always a tough game. So whatever. Whatever and however you cap this game from a football standpoint, go ahead and, and tack tack a field goal on there with for the the reasoning of BC um, travel across traveling across the country here. Absolutely, and that's and, a, that's, yeah. that's a twenty year sample. You know, it's, it is yeah. what it is. Yeah, I mean that's that's a tough one. I mean, we were saying uh, last week about how or two weeks ago we were saying how tough it is for those East Coast teams to go over in the West Coast. But it does work both ways. Obviously, they're not going to be playing, uh, you know, at midnight. But uh, it's still, uh, it's still the hard, hard to travel like that and play like that. The, the, the A's, I don't think the A's going to be able to, to have a lot of success in the air. So the, it's going to come down. To, you'll have more on, on Friday. Or, we'll have more on Friday regarding this game. But it's going to come down to BC can run the ball or not because there's they're not going to have success dropping back in the eighth, throwing a bunch against this secondary. I just. The pass rush is too good, and, and they've they've lost their best defensive player. Toronto has that's that's an issue. Winton McManus, that's an issue. Yeah. He's done for the season, but uh, I don't see them dropping back and having a bunch of success passing. So it's gonna if they can run the ball, if BC can run the ball, that would be the key. Yeah, I mean, uh, moving on to the next game, but uh, one one important thing to know is that there's been a few teams that have been uh, shutting down players or losing key players to season-ending injuries lately. Uh, now we're moving on to the Saturday night game. Edmonton Elks taking on the Blue Bombers. Blue Bombers, massive 13.5 point favorites. Uh, but both these teams just shut guys down. Uh, we just had Kenny Lawler come back from the uh, injured list, but he's immediately done for the year. And uh, Winnipeg uh, just shut down Nick Taylor, defensive back, uh, key guy for them in that backfield there. So both those guys, maybe that offsets. Uh, but still looks like a massive line for myself. 
uh, with the Bombers sitting as 13 and a half point favorites at home. We know that the Elks are terrible at home. They actually travel pretty well, uh, six and two ATS on the road. Uh, so this might be a spot uh, where I consider taking the Elks with the points. Uh, what are you thinking? I know you love to uh, live bet the Bombers uh, on those second half lines. Yeah, this a big piece coming to Winnipeg. Yeah, Alden Darby is kind of under the radar, but he just got traded from Hamilton, Winnipeg. He is the piece they need on their defense. He he played at any of those slot positions, a uh, Sam linebacker or halfback. But he he was there at, in the Great Cup Championship teams, and he's he's a guy that they need and, and kind of like the, one one of the vocal vocal presence there. So that that's a big move for him him getting out there. Uh, and I think I think that would give them something because their their secondary has been. No one's really talked about it a lot, uh, but their secondary has been um, a letdown this year for certain. Yeah. They've been so good the last few years. Absolutely. So, yeah, I, I, I have nothing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna figure out once we get the rosters. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Thursday or Friday morning, we'll, we'll be able to give more on what happens here because just not enough information on this yet. Yeah, I mean, another interesting thing to note is that uh, when you're looking at a team like Winnipeg last year, when we ended up clinching the number one seed, they, you know, they started resting guys a lot more. And uh, that can make it really tough to cover those spreads as well. We saw that game against Montreal last year, uh, another game late in the year, too, where they just pretty much threw in the towel and didn't really care so much. Uh, So with the standings being what they are, uh, you might start to uh, look at those lines for the Bombers and uh, definitely think of uh, fading them there. All right, guys, final game on this week's slate. Uh, We are actually going to Monday night. Uh, It is Thanksgiving up here in Canada, of course. Alouettes at home taking on the Red Black. Uh, Right now we're looking at a line at uh, sitting with the Alouettes as six and a half point home favorites. Total sitting at 48. Uh, This is another one we're just a little bit too far out. I mean, this game isn't until Monday night. Uh, definitely some injuries to keep an eye on there. Uh, maybe even William Stanback comes back for the Owls. So uh, definitely lots up in the air for this one. I don't really have an early lean myself. Is there anything you're looking for, Chez, as we head into this one? Every Everybody's salivating right now. What, what's the angle everybody loves? The, the coaching change betting angle, right? First mm-hmm. game, new coach. Yep. Um, but I'm warning you right now, toss, toss that angle out the window. Um, you're looking at you, everyone loves Bobby Dice, who's the coach that's taking over in, in Ottawa. But the issue, the issue is, you got a Montreal team that's just battled back from from the depths and are now one game back of, of Toronto with a month left, one game back from first place. And there's no league where first place is more important than the CFL. And just because it's you basically play one home game and you're in the championship game, it's it's. it's it's everything. So they're going to, Montreal is going to, it's going to be, it's not going to be a letdown spot at all. I expect them to be motivated. And, and so you might lose a little bit, a little bit of that, uh, um, you know, the coaching change angle, if you like it. I thought it and initially, and then I looked into it a little further and I just, I just don't see it. They don't have a play caller announced yet either in Ottawa. I don't even know who's calling now. offensive play. They probably know they haven't talked about it out, out loud yet though. But yeah, I mean, that's a big one. Cause uh, we've seen that quarterback controversy all year. And uh, with La Police gone, uh, that uh, situation could be even more dire, regardless of who is under center. All right, guys, that uh, does it for our early show this week. We'll be at you on Friday. Just Hopefully a little taste, to- just a little taste to, to, to open things up and, and and what's going on in the markets. We'll have we'll have some more uh, some more juice on Friday and and, uh, and and have have some plays for sure. Absolutely, I'm. Uh, there's a couple uh, player props I'm gonna keeping my eye on too for that. Sask Hamilton game. So hopefully uh, those numbers are looking good for me on Friday. That's it, guys. Best of luck. We'll see you on Friday.